Hello dear students, this is grade 12 mathematics lesson on unit 4, application of derivative. On today's lesson, we focus on application of derivative in determining shape of graph. So, after revising this lesson, you are expected to determine increasing and decreasing interval of a function using derivative. And after that, you are also expected to determine concavity interval and inflection point of a graph. Now, let's see these concepts one by one. Okay, increasing and decreasing test. Suppose that f is continuous on an interval i and is differentiable in the interior of i. Then, if the derivative of the function is greater than or equal to zero for all x in the interior of i, then f is increasing on that interval. Look, if we have this function f of x the derivative of this function from the right side of this part is positive because you know derivative means it is the slope of tangent line if you draw a tangent line for at this point you will have this one tangent line like this so the slope of such line is it is positive slope or that means the derivative of this function is greater than or equal to zero for the right part of A. Therefore, this function is increasing. And if f derivative of x is greater than zero, and the derivative is zero only for finite number of points on I, then f is strictly increasing in this case. Look. The derivative of this function at a, at a finite number at a, is, it is 0. So this function is strictly increasing from a to infinity because the derivative is 0 at finite number a, and for the other part it is greater than 0. Therefore, this function is strictly on this interval. But if you take this one, this function, look this, if you take this function, the derivative of this function, uh, as you can see, the derivative is this, the slope of this tangent line. The slope of tangent line is positive everywhere here. It is positive. But for this part, from, for this part, the slope or uh, the derivative of this function is constant, is 0. The derivative of this part will be t0. The derivative of our f of x it is 0 for this interval. From assume this point is a for b. For this interval, since the derivative is 0, this interval is not finite. Therefore, this function is derivative for every point. It is greater or equal to 0. But this function is not strictly increasing because the derivative is 0 at some infinite points. But if the derivative is 0 at finite point, that function will be strictly increasing. Now let's continue the other part. Okay, if f derivative of x is less than or equal to 0 for all x in the interior of i, then f is this decreasing. Geometrically, you can see this one. If you take this function, for this interval, the slope derivative, the slope of tangent line will be like this. So, the slope of such line is negative. Therefore, the graph is decreasing for this part. Here it says, if for the derivative of the function is less than 0 for all x in that case, the function is decreasing. Okay, now let's see the next one. If the derivative of the function is less than 0 and is equal to 0 only for finite number of points on that interval, then f is it is strictly decreasing on i. Now let's see example for this concept. Here say, let C be is a critical point 
of f then 1 if the derivative of the function changes its sign from minus 2 plus at c then f of c is a local minimum point look this one graphically let's take this function this point is a critical point because the slope of tangent line at this point the derivative at at c is it is zero c is a critical point and the derivative of this function is changing from this part is decreasing or it is the slope of tangent line for this part is it is negative and the slope of tangent line for this part is it is increasing or if you take tangent line for this one it is positive the derivative of the function if it changes from negative to positive at the critical point then this point we call it this point local minimum point local minimum point now let's see the next one if f derivative of x changes the sign from plus 2 minus at c then f of c is a local maximum point we can also see this uh, graphically look this one we have this function at this point f derivative of the function at c it is zero so this is a critical number this is a critical number so the slope of tangent line to this graph from the left side if you take from the left side it is positive and the slope of tangent line to the right of the critical number will be like this therefore it is negative so the derivative of the function is changing from plus to minus at the critical point therefore this point is this local maximum point of the given function and if f derivative of x does not change sign at c then f has neither local maximum nor local minimum value at that point now let's see example for this let f of x is given to be it is 3x the power of 4 minus 4x cubed minus 12x squared plus 5 then find the interval where f is increasing and decreasing so to do this we need to find the derivative and the sign of derivative of the function and we are asked also to determine local maximum and local minimum values. So let's see the solution. We need to find the derivative of this function. The derivative of our function f of x, this is equal to the derivative of this one is it is 12 times x cubed. 12x cubed minus the derivative of this one is this 12 x squared minus the derivative of this one is this 24 x 24 24 x the derivative of 5 is 0 so the derivative of our function f of x this is equal to we can take uh, 12 x as a common factor so 12x into we have x squared here minus x and minus 2 so this is equal to 12x 
and factorizing this, you'll have this one. x minus 2 and times x plus 1. This is the derivative of our function f of x. So, to determine increasing and decreasing interval, we need to now or find the sign of this value. So, to find that, I have to use sign chart. So, let's see sign chart. We will have x equal to negative 1 at this point. x is equal to negative 1. And x is equal to 0. We need to find the critical numbers or the, f the value of x that makes this function 0. And in order, we need to put in order negative 1, 0, and 2. And we'll have this 12x here. And x minus 2, x plus, x plus 1. 12x is 0 at this point. And to the right of this, I will put 1, for example, 12 times 1 is positive. To the right of 0, 12x will be this positive. To the left will be this negative. And x minus 2, it is 0 when you put 2. If you put a number greater than 2, it will be plus, And for other part, it will be minus. x plus 1 will be 0 at x equals to negative 1. And it, it will be plus for a number greater than negative 1 and it will be negative for x is a negative 1. So now I need to find the sign of the product. So here it is 12x times x minus 2 times x plus 1. So for this part, the product will be this minus, minus times minus times minus, it will be minus. And for this interval from negative 1 up to 0, the product will be this plus, and we have 0 here. We have 0 at the boundary. And the product of this gives you plus times minus times plus will be this minus. And here at the boundary it is 0, and then here it is positive. Therefore, from this, you can see that if the derivative of x is greater than or equal to 0, if the derivative of x is this greater or equal to 0 on the interval, close interval negative 1 up to 0, it's from negative 1 up to 0, from negative 1 up to 0 and from 2 up to infinity from 2 up to 2 up to infinity therefore the function is it is increasing on this interval it is increasing on from negative 1 up to 0 and 2 up to infinity it is increasing on this interval and our function f of x is negative, negative on this interval. If derivative of x is this less than or equal to 0 for the interval from negative infinity up to negative 1. From negative infinity up to negative 1 and from 0 to 2. From 0 to 2. Therefore, our function is strictly increasing on this interval. On, it is increasing, strictly increasing on this interval because the derivative is greater than or equal to 0. Strictly increasing, strictly increasing on this interval. Since the derivative uh, of this function is 0 as finite number, so we can say strictly increasing. And 
on this interval, the function is this, strictly decreasing. Strictly, strictly decreasing. Strictly decreasing. Okay, now uh, the next question we are asked to find is this, the local maximum and the local minimum points and values. From this, you can see that negative 1, 0, and 2 are the critical numbers because the derivative of this function is 0 at these numbers. Now, at critical number negative 1, at the critical number negative 1, the derivative is changing from minus 2 plus. Minus 2 plus means just the curve is just moving like this, this minus 2 plus. So at this point, this point f of negative 1 will be this local minimum point. So from this f of f of negative 1 is it is local minimum. Local, local minimum point. And the other critical number is 0. At 0, the derivative is changing sign from plus to minus. It's changing from plus to minus means just the curve is moving like this. The derivative is changing from plus to minus means uh, it has a local maximum at that point. So f of 0, from this you can see that f of 0 is it is local, it's local max. And this one at 2, the derivative is changing its sign from minus 2 plus. So minus 2 plus means it is moving like this. So it has a local uh, minimum point at this. So f of 2 is, is it is local, local minimum. So this is the first example. Uh, we'll continue to the next one. Okay, now here, uh, consider the graph of f derivative of x below and determine the interval where f is increasing and decreasing and the local maximum and local minimum values. Look, the graph given is this one. Assume this is a graph of, it's not the graph of f of x, the graph of f derivative of x is given. And this point is it is a, and this point it is b, this point it is c. So here we are asked the interval in which the function, our function f of x is uh, increasing and decreasing. First, let's see the interval where the function is increasing. So to find the interval in which the function is increasing, we need to find the point where, or the interval where f derivative of x is greater than zero. From this graph, this is the graph of f derivative of x. So. Uh, from A to B, you can see that f derivative of x is above x axis. That means it is greater than 0. Not only for that, from C and infinity, the graph is, or f derivative of x is above x axis, means f derivative of x is greater than 0. So, f derivative of x is greater than 0 for the interval for, for the interval from A to B. From A to B. Uh, and from C2 and from C up to infinity. So for this interval, the graph is above x axis or greater than 0. The derivative of this function gets than 0. This means that it's increasing or it is strictly increasing on this interval. Therefore, our function is, it is strictly increasing on this interval. Now, our function f derivative of x is this 
less than or equal to zero means this is a graph of f derivative of x, less than zero means the point where this function is below x axis. Therefore, f derivative of x is less than zero or below x axis for the interval negative infinity up to h below x axis and from b to c also below x axis. Therefore, here f derivative of x is less than zero for the interval from negative infinity up to from negative infinity up to a is below x axis and from b up to c also below x axis and 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 from b to c since the derivative of the function f of x is uh, less than zero on this interval so our function is it is strictly decreasing on this interval. And in addition to this, we are asked to find the local maximum and the local minimum values. To find that, we need to see the critical numbers. The critical number is a point where the derivative is 0. Our f derivative of x is 0 from the graph at, at this point, the function the derivative of this function is 0 at this point, at this point, at p, and at c. So these are the critical numbers. So at x is equal to a, at x is equal to b, and at x equals to c, the function or f derivative of x is 0. So these are critical numbers. These are critical numbers. So 1, at this critical number, the derivative is changing its sign from this one is below x axis, its derivative is negative, that means it's changing sign from negative to positive. So if change sign from negative to positive is like this, so this point is local, uh, minimum point. Therefore, f of f of a, f of a is it is local, local minimum f of s is local minimum and at p you can see the derivative uh, is changing this one is positive and this one is negative it's changing from plus to minus plus to like this it is plus to minus so this point local max therefore f of b from this is f of f of b is this local local max f of b is this local max and f of c f of c is the derivative changing sign from minus to plus minus to plus means this local uh, minimum so f of c is this local minimum point local minimum point so this is it we'll continue to make this part okay the next part is concavity and inflection point. Before concavity test, let's define the terms what concavity and inflection point means. Look this one. If we have such type of curve, if we draw any tangent line to this curve, it will be this above this tangent line and therefore this this curve we call this concave up if you take this one and draw tangent line to it the curve will be always below the tangent line so in this case we call this this concave downward this it is this part will be this concave down and the point where concavity changes we call it inflection point this point is a point where this the graph is concave up and changes this concavity at this point to concave down so this point we call it inflection point therefore the point where the point where uh, concavity changes we call this inflection point inflection point now let's see how to 
determine the interval of concavity or concave up and concave down of a given function. Let f be a function which is twice differentiable on interval i. Then, if the second derivative of the function is greater than zero for all x in that interval, then the graph is it is concave up word. So to determine the interval for concave upward, simply you see the sign of the second derivative. If the sign of the second derivative is greater than zero, so on that interval the function is this concave up. And if uh, the second derivative of the function is less than zero for uh, all x in that interval, then the graph of f is it is concave downward. It is concave downward. And the point where the concavity changes, we call that inflection point. And let's see second derivative test to here. Suppose f is it is twice differentiable and c is critical number. Then, if the second derivative of the function as c is greater than zero, then f has local minimum at c. If the second derivative greater than zero, then the function will have local minimum at c. And if the second derivative is less than zero at c, then the function will have local maximum value at c. If the second derivative uh, at c is zero, then the test fails. That means the test, it doesn't tell you whether the function has local max, local minimum, or neither at that point. So the test fails if the second derivative at c is this zero. Now, Let's see example. Here, discuss the behavior of the curve f of x is equal to x to the power of 4 minus 4x cubed with respect to concavity and points of inflection and local maximum and minimum values. Now, uh, let's do this question together. So to find the concavity interval, we need to find the second derivative of this function, the sign of the second derivative of this function. So uh, the first derivative of our function will be equal to, it is 4x cubed minus the derivative of this one is 12x squared is for the first derivative. From this, I can put the critical number. So the first derivative uh, of this function will be equal to, let's take 4x squared as a common, 4x squared as a common. Uh, you'll have x here minus, we have 3 here. OK, from this. You can see that x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 3. These two are critical numbers. But to determine the concavity interval, we need to find the second derivative of this function. So uh, the second derivative of our function is equal to this. Take the derivative of this one. It will be this 12x squared minus the derivative of this one. It is 2 times 12 is 24, 24 x. So we need to find or check the sign of uh, this second derivative. So let's take uh, 12 x as a common. You'll have here x minus 2. So uh, to find the sign of this, we have to use sign chart. So using sign chart, you will have this one. The boundary numbers, 0 and 2. It's 0 and 2. And our function here will have 
12x, x minus 2 here. So the sign of 12x uh, for x less than 0 is negative. It will be 0 at x equal to 0. For the other part, it will be this positive. And x minus 2 is this 0 for x equals to 2. And positive for this part and negative for this part. Now let's see the sign of the product 12x times x minus 2. The product of this suite is positive. Here it is 0. This one is negative. This point is 0. The product of 2 is positive. So from this, uh, you can see that the second derivative of this function is positive for 2 greater than 0 and less than 0. Therefore, here, the second derivative of our function f of x is greater than 0 for, for the interval, open interval 2 up to infinity and negative infinity up to 0. Negative infinity up to 0. Therefore, for this interval, for this interval, our graph is this concave upward since the second derivative is greater than 0. It is concave upward. And for this interval, the second derivative for from 0 to 2, open interval 0 up to 2, the second derivative is the second derivative of our function is this, less than 0. It is less than 0. Therefore, for this interval, our function it is concave down, since the second derivative is less than 0. Concave down. Okay. Now, what remains is we need to find the local maximum and local uh, minimum and maximum values or points. So, to find that, we have the critical numbers x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 3. So here, using second derivative test, we can check whether uh, this point, x equal to 0 and x is a critical number. These are the critical numbers, the derivative where 0, this is a critical number. are the critical numbers. We can check these critical numbers, whether they are local max or local min, using the first derivative test. But let's use now second derivative test. So the second derivative of our function is, it is given by this expression, 12x squared, 12x squared minus 12x squared minus 24x. So the second derivative of our this function at x is equal to 0 is this 0. Therefore, we don't know whether this is this local max or local minimum point uh, using second derivative test because it is 0, the test fails. So check that we need to use a first derivative test. Please, students, check whether this point is a local max or a local minimum point using first derivative test. We have first derivative here, check the sign, and if the sign changes from plus to minus at this critical point, it will be this local max. If it changes sign from minus to plus, it will be a local minimum. So check by yourself. Now let's check x equal to 3 using second derivative test. Uh, for 3, the second derivative at 3, this equal to this 12 times 9 minus 24 times 3. This equal to 9 times 2, it is 18. 9 times 1 is 9 plus 1, it is 108 minus 
3 times 4, 12. 3 times 2, 6 plus 1 is 7. So this is positive. When you subtract, this gets positive. Since the second derivative at 3 is positive, uh, this function has a local minimum at this point. So f of 3 is this local minimum. Therefore, it is f of 3 is this local, it is local minimum. Now, let's summarize what we have seen today. The basic point that we have seen today is the first one. If the derivative of the function is greater than zero, then that function is increasing. If the derivative of the function is less than zero, then that function is decreasing on that interval. Uh, if the derivative of the function changes the sign uh, from minus to plus at c, then f of c is this local minimum. It is a local minimum uh, value. If the derivative of the function changes its sign from plus to minus at c or at the critical point, then f of c will be this local maximum. And if the second derivative of the function is greater than 0 for all x in i, then the graph is this concave upward. If the second derivative is positive, the graph is concave upward. If the second derivative of the function is this less than 0 for all x in i, then the graph will be this concave, it is concave downward. So uh, this is all about today's lesson and I'll give you questions for you. Uh, please try these questions and in addition to this, please read examples on page 179 up to 183 and do exercise 4.3, 4.4 and 4.5 which are found on page 177 to 188. So it's all about today's lesson. Until next lecture class, goodbye.